This is a very sad day for America. Trump calling the latest indictment against him a persecution. The former president making those remarks after leaving his arraignment yesterday. What happened in that courtroom? That's coming up next. Plus, not a bad way to spend a Friday. How you can enjoy national parks today at no cost. Jackie. Yeah, good morning. And as we look at towards later on today, we'll see those temperatures climbing. But Lex will have the latest on uh, the traffic, which is looking pretty okay out there right now. <laughs> And a reclining Liberty sculpture arrives in Arlington. Why the giant statue is starting a conversation in the community. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, it's 6 o'clock on this Friday morning. Good morning to you. It's a bit misty out there. We had some rain early this morning. Dare I say what? Hey. Say it. Yeah. Say it. Overcasting. Overcasting. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you yes. watched yesterday morning, you would understand why this yeah. is so significant. Hard for the sunshine to come through, I think. <laughs> yeah. Good morning yes. to you. I'm Corey James. Good morning. I'm Tilton Pekile. Oh, thank God it's Friday. Yes. Ooh. What a relief. Uh, Lex is here filling in for Shanika, dragging your commute. Shaggy yes. with our overcasty forecast yes. today. <laughs> Yes. How are we yeah. looking besides I mean, being overcast? Exactly. I mean, this morning we're starting off with the overcast. Maybe a little bit of that sunshine later on this afternoon for D.C. areas uh, uh, off towards the east. But farther off towards the north and west where we do break out into that sunshine, notice that those temperatures will be a little bit hotter. We're going to be talking about those highs. Mid-upper 80s to near 90 out towards the ID1 corridor and back over towards the mountains region. But closer towards D.C., likely right around 80 degrees for that high today. Now this morning we are starting off with a few of those rain showers. Those mainly across southernmost parts of Maryland at this point. Uh, but aside from that, could be seeing a little bit more of that mist like we did just see on that live cam of the Kennedy Center in D.C. So the roads may be a little bit damp. Mainly damp from the rain showers late last night, but also may need the windshield wipers just because of a few of those light sprinkles. Cloudy out there by 11 a.m. By 3 p.m., we're looking at mainly cloudy skies. So a little bit more of that sunshine, but again, noticeably cooler out there today, especially for our eastern zones. Temperatures, though, out there right now, we're seeing 60s across the board, aside from Lexington Park, right around 70. I'll certainly have more details looking towards that weekend forecast coming up. Lex is here with the all-important look at those roadways. How's traffic right now? All right, well, traffic still looking great for drivers out there. Going to go ahead and show you some things that we've got going on here, right here in the Palisades neighborhood. We do have a fallen tree. D.C. police are on it. They're working to clear that up, but they do have this portion of Arizona Avenue closed off while they work to get that tree out of the roadways. They're asking people to simply go around it, find somewhere else. Taking a look at the beltway this morning, it's all clear. This is what drivers are seeing. Nice open roadways, driving the speed limit. Everything's looking good. All right, Lex, thank you. It is 6.03 on this Friday morning. Let's take a look at your no-and-go headlines this morning. D.C. officials, they're reminding parents to get their kids' vaccinations up to date. Children four and older can visit any school-based clinic for their shots. Students can also visit mobile vaccine units at community centers and rec centers across the district. And Maryland officials working to reduce the number of people ex experiencing homelessness in Washington County. The county will receive about $831,000 to increase permanent housing assistance. Advocates say the move will help people that need it the most. And national parks are free today. It's to honor the Great American Outdoors Act. Now that provides funding for maintenance of all U.S. parks. In about 15 minutes, we'll have the local parks that you can visit in the DMV for free. Time right now is 604. Former President Donald Trump is back in New Jersey this morning after pleading not guilty in D.C. federal court yesterday. Yeah, the former president entering that plea two days after he was indicted for the third time this year. Trump faced four felony count charges from the indictment earlier this week, all related to his alleged efforts to undo his 2020 presidential loss. Among the charges, conspiracy to defraud the government and conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Those charges carry a sentence of up to two decades behind bars. And the entire proceeding last Lasted less than an hour yesterday. Cam no cameras were allowed inside the courtroom, but the AP reporting the former president was stern faced with his hands folded and shaking his head sometimes. And the former president entered his not guilty plea, answering questions from the judge, then thanking her before walking out of the arraignment. Under the agreed conditions of his release, Trump may not violate federal or state law. He must also appear in court as directed and sign an appearance bond. 
The former president also cannot communicate with anyone he knows to be a witness. If Trump does not comply, a warrant could be issued for his arrest and he could be held before his trial. And the historic arraignment drew big crowds outside of the courthouse yesterday. Yeah, in that crowd were protesters and supporters who turned out for what was a monumental day. People traveled from across the country to be outside the D.C. courthouse for that arraignment. Some say they came to see some accountability. Others came just to witness history. And we're here to support the president. Uh, he was impeached twice and found out guilty. Third indictment. It's all a sham. The, the, the DOJ has been weaponized against Trump. I wanted to see Trump get arraigned. I mean, I want to see him come and get his arraignment. Been against a lot of his policy uh, from the beginning. Many people saying this arraignment is significant for the future of the country. And the next hearing in this case is set for August 28th. That is just a couple of days after the first debate in the 2024 Republican presidential primary in Milwaukee. As for what's next, prosecutors in Georgia, they've also been investigating Trump and his allies for their efforts to overturn his election loss in that state. For the latest on all these cases, you can go to our website, dcnewsnow.com. Just type Trump in the upper right corner of your screen to find all of our coverage of the former president. And time right now is 6.06 on this Friday morning. Happening now, West Virginia State Treasurer is warning people about deceptive phone calls. Officials say those calls are being made to people across the DMV and also the Mountain State. According to the State Treasurer, the caller claims to reach out on behalf of their office, then tells you funds are available from a dormant bank account or unclaimed life insurance and policy. Officials are also reminding people to never give out personal information to people they do not know portray themselves as working for my office as it relates to unclaimed property. Contact our office if you see anything like that. If you feel like something might not be above board, contact our office and we'll verify it on our end. The state treasurer says if you do get one of those calls and would like to verify it, you can contact the number on your screen. That's 304-558-5000. And over in Western Maryland, the town of Hancock celebrating a new cannabis manufacturing plant. And with it, new jobs being created. It's part of the town's efforts to grow a stronger economy after many setbacks. The town manager says they want to rebrand as more than just a tourist area. Part of the efforts include improving water infrastructure to attract new industries. It boils down to simple economics. We have to have more jobs here for people, right? So you get jobs here and people will live here. You know, we get more housing available. The town is now holding meetings with the county commission in hopes of receiving support to improve the water system. All right, 607 and the U.S. Secretary of Education was in Prince George's County earlier this week, pushing for more tech education across the country. Yeah, and this comes as students took part in the county's career and technical education program. Now, the U.S. Secretary of Education highlighted the importance and benefits of apprenticeship on his trip. This week, Governor Moore announced a $6 million investment for more apprenticeships in Maryland. Now, many of the former students say early exposure to programs like this are necessary. I started out actually as a brick mason. Since then, I learned how to do tile, ceramic tile. Um, I learned how to do concrete work. I definitely think it's life changing. If you want to be a high earner at a young age, then it would definitely benefit you in every way possible. Officials say when employers take part in the program, it leads to more job opportunities for young people in the county. And in Virginia, a school district near Richmond will require all students to wear clear backpacks when they return this fall. Petersburg City Public Schools says the goal is to ensure safety on campus. The district will be providing clear backpacks to students who do not have one as well. A mutual responsibility between the administrators, teachers, and police. And our primary mission, again, is keep children safe. Uh, we serve a security function and an education function. And it goes hand in hand with those people that have dedicated themselves to educate our children. Petersburg is one of a handful of Virginia school districts adopting this clear backpack policy. Spotsylvania County Public Schools is also weighing the requirement for the 2024-25 school year. And speaking of school year, back here in the district, officials are reminding parents to get their kids' vaccinations up to date. The D.C. Health Department sharing some important steps parents can take. Children four and over can visit any school-based clinic. Students can also visit mobile vaccine units at community centers and rec centers across D.C. This year, DC Health has updated the definition of compliance to make it easier for families and simpler for schools and healthcare practitioners to know when a child needs any given shot. Essentially, as soon as a shot comes due, 
based on the CDC schedule, your child is due for it and it's required for schools. A virtual town hall scheduled for parents on Tuesday, August 8th at 5 p.m. for those who may have questions. And a CDC panel is recommending a new drug for infants that protects against the respiratory virus, RSV. Now, while the virus feels like a cold for most people, it can be life-threatening for babies and the elderly. The new drug developed by AstraZeneca in Sanofi is expected to be ready in the fall. A piece of art that may look somewhat familiar to you is calling a neighborhood in our region home for the next year. And the artist hopes it's a powerful symbol. The statue known as the Reclining Liberty is showcased on the front lawn of the Museum of Contemporary Art Arlington. The artist Zach Landsberg says the inspiration for the sculpture comes from the Reclining Buddha. Some people, though, have their own interpretations. I think she's tired, just like women in our society. We're tired. The symbol of um, peace, harmony, meditation, welcoming immigrants. The sculpture will remain in Arlington until next July.